How much fun is Hall of Fame Day on MLB tonight? This has been a treat. Oh, this so is my good. first experience with this, and this is this is great. Derek Jeter and, and the greatest Canadian baseball player right here walking in the room. This is this is special. So we're at home plate because our Hall of Famer Jim Tomey wants to talk to newly elected Hall of Famer Larry Walker about his approach throughout his Hall of Fame career. Jim, what do you got? So, you know, again, I said it earlier. I mean, I loved your swing. I loved everything about it. There were many things. I think we're going to go to the monitor here, kind of break it down. I'll point out a few things that I really admired when you played. To me, I th you know, the thing that you did well is many things, but you had your hands above the baseball. So that ball that was chest high, belt high, you could get to it very easy. The other thing, eyes were there and your chin was on your front shoulder, which made everything square. The leg kick, you went up, straight down, hit from a firm front side, and then the hands, to me, the hands were just so fluid. When you talk about load, you had two loads for me. You had your hands that were moving, and the leg kick was another part. But what I loved about your leg kick, Larry, is it did, you didn't gain a whole lot of ground. It went up, it went down, and you obviously here in Bush Stadium, you shoot the ball, the ball's out over the plate, you shoot it to left center in old Bush Stadium, which was not an easy park to hit in. And uh, I got to tell you, man, and I said it, you know, not only could you hit for power, you won batting crowns, drove in runs, and it was just a joy to watch you hit. As a left-handed guy, you know, later in my career, I raised my hands higher, and it was because when my hands were low, I felt like I was just under the ball too much, and right. I, always, I always admired that. Well, it's funny that you say that with your hands because um, a lot of those highlights right there were of me later in the career, and my hands seemed to go higher the older I got. You know, I think it was more uh, just able to throw the barrel down a lot quicker and easier and, and was able to get to, to inside pitches a little bit easier and quicker than I had it when, I, when they were lower. So it's yeah. just weird how it worked that way. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I actually, that's what happened to me when I went to Cle when I was in Cleveland, Clarence Jones came over. He asked me one day in BP, he goes, have you ever thought about raising your hands? And that ball that was chest high, it felt like I got to it much quicker. Right. So. You know, it's funny seeing that picture right there. That uh, I always I see guys and I see you're, you're squeezing the bat so hard, you're, you're, you're going to put indentations. And I look at that picture that we have behind us there, and you can see what I meant when I say my hands are so loose. I mean, that, that bat's on the end of my fingertips, which is always a I try to yeah, tell which people. He's, He's saying right here, yeah. it's just real just, light. Just real yes. light and everything. Nothing's really going to happen until that bat starts going down towards the ball. Really calm. Like, like a golf club. You're supposed to you know, not, don't squeeze the club. Same type of thing, but just right in, the, right in my fingertips, right at the end. I've golfed with Greg. He holds the, he holds the golf club. <laughs> Actually, it's loose. I, I hold think. it really tight. So, oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm choking it. I need like a, now, uh, as a hockey player, was that your grip? With, I mean, light with a hockey stick, or is that different? Well, fortunately, I didn't have to worry about that because I was a goaltender. So, oh, different. So I just sat in there. I, I'd have a light, a, a, a light grip on it when I was hacking uh, ankles in front of the net. Yeah, so I would, mm. yeah. Yeah. Billy, Billy Smith style. All those years of all that offense against you, you're like, you know what, I'm going to start doing some damage to <laughs> some other people out here. Um, you know, I faced you a few times over my career. Actually, the very first at bat I ever had against Larry, um, you know, my dad's sitting there in the stands. He flew down from Canada. Here I am facing Larry Walker. It's a good moment. And what does he do? I throw a backdoor slider and he bridges me right uh, left center at no. Coors Field. Yeah. And that was a tough moment, right? My dad. But that wasn't the only one. We actually have him take me deep again here. This is in, in, uh, in May of tw 2001. In Florida, the young buck I was still teaching me lessons. You cannot throw the high cheese. It was a line <laughs> drive. Our second baseman jumped for. And then it got me to thinking, I know how to get this guy out. I was doing it wrong the whole time. And the best way to get it out was I watched another a pitcher that I really loved. And I said, you know what? This is the best way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I should throw left-handed at about 100 miles an hour, and I might have had a shot. Tell us about this story and go through this. Yeah, you know, well, like I say, we, it's it's far enough gone now. We kind of played it off like it was an accident, but obviously it was staged. And Randy got mad at me. Imagine that, Randy getting mad. No way. But I, he, he said I was supposed to switch over to the right side and continue to hold that bat right-handed. I'm like, okay, well, I don't think I was going to do that. I didn't even make an attempt here to swing, so <laughs> I melted it for a walk. You know, oh, <laughs> still, he threw so hard. <laughs> you, were you ready to step in the bucket when he was right-handed? Yeah, I, I have it a bat because Randy and I were teammates with the Expos, and back in minor league spring training, you know, we're on the backfield. You try to make a squad, and and Randy's up there throwing at that time 110 with no clue where it was going. And I stepped in during this uh, inter-squad game and strike one down the middle. 
swung it strike to a slider. I think it bounced by over in the batter's box where you're standing. Mm -hmm. The 0-2 pitch, I literally felt it come under me and hit my chin right underneath my and I fell down and got back up and went, oh my God, what am I doing here? <laughs> but the, the, the 1-2 pitch, I swung before it left his hand and on the mound. Literally, he hadn't thrown the ball yet. I went like this and sprinted to the dugout and said, no, thank you, I am good. So that's, uh, that was him when in his crazy wild days. So. And then when he became an A's, he had 393 against Randy Johnson. Yeah, yeah, he could hit righties, lefties, it didn't matter. That's why 393 he's against the big unit. And, yeah. that's, 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 why and that's why, you know, like today, like I said, it's a special day being a Canadian guy, a uh, fellow Canadian here. We have this good moment at MLB Network, and one of our producers, Chin, she's like, you know what, you want me to grab a picture of you and Larry? So we're sitting there in the makeup room before <laughs> oh, our there it is. picture. <laughs> and oh didn't that turn out great? <laughs> <laughs> that is, yeah. you're going to cherish oh. that forever. I, that is framed ab <laughs> above my bed right there. That is spectacular. That'll look good when we're like 80s. Yeah, we're still moving good. Yeah. <laughs> And there's a one-photo policy here yeah, on all Fame day. Everyone Sometimes gets one you got to go with what you uh, get, you know? That was a lot of fun. Larry, thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks, pal. Appreciate no. being here.